I'm going to move on to something that's um, probably dear to your heart, albeit there's been a slight detachment of the relationship recent times for a variety of reasons. But Southampton. Yep. Obviously, they've gotten relegated. They've gotten relegated before. Yep. Um, they've gone into administration as a football club previously. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and they've come back. They spent a lot of time out of the Premier League, got dropped all the way down to League One, didn't they? They um, did. Pardew took over and bought a player for me, Joseph Font, and built back up and got up Indeed. back up the table. Thanks very much for that, by the way. He was great for us. It was all right, Joseph, wasn't he? Did a really good job for us. Yeah, yeah, really yeah nice good. lad. Nice yeah. lad. I, um, Neil, I think Neil Warnock was the manager there, didn't I think he, I think Neil thought he was too nice. There was That was the best £2 million Southampton have ever spent. I tell you, I, I, two million? I, I mean, you... No, I no. didn't get two million for it. No, no. Oh, let me finish. Uh, what do you know that I, I don't know? I thought it was a million pounds for Jose and a million pounds for Ricky Lambert. Ah, so okay. that in while we were in League One, right? So that's the two million pound yeah. I'm talking about. So you can tell me if it was different. That that's not what no, you got, got for Jose. I, I got um, Nicola Cortese, who was the architect of everything successful at Southampton. Everything was down to Nicola. <laughs> right. um, when you look at Southampton this season, I know Martin Simmons. Yeah, I think he's quite a good lad. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. Uh, the Southampton CEO. Where do you? I mean, you've got a new ownership model, and for them, a new owner, not a new ownership model. Yeah. Uh, for them, it's a car crash, isn't it? You know, the first season they've been in control, uh, in sole control, clank, they've gone through the floor. After investing a lot of money as Where well. Where do you lay the blame at that? I think the biggest portion, because you can't just lay it on one person. Um, when the club gets relegated, there's obviously multiple things that are Well, they make wrong. the case about recruitment, don't they? They're talking about the fact so, they've got a lot of young players. They so, didn't have enough senior players in the dressing room yeah, to balance it off. I, I think the, the majority of the of the blame lies with the recruitment policy for this season. You know, we've spent nearly 140 million quid this season. Yeah. We've never done that in our history ever without selling somebody mm. else for, for big money. Um, and you have to look at that and say, how can we, after having spent that amount of money, be detached at the bottom of the Premier League? I don't think you can look at the actual owners themselves. You know, they've they've put their hands in their pockets to a serious to a serious extent and gone right we're going to back you here's here's a whole bunch of money that you've never had before but blindly backing you yeah because uh, no one would no one so, would suggest that underspending 140 million quid on a series of young players when the balance in the dressing room isn't right is good business sense so yeah recruitment recruitment for me was the, probably the biggest part the players themselves got to take a look at themselves because i saw some woeful performances yeah. this season and honestly i was at, i was at the the game when they got relegated against fulham and Seriously, some of those players made me look like a workhorse. <laughs> okay, it was incredible. I've I've right. sat in that in that stadium and watched a team go down without a fight. Right, and I and for all the accusations that were levelled at me in my career, the one you would never have, uh, have have thrown at me was that when we were in a relegation scrap, I did not hide. You didn't have the stomach for it, yeah. You know, and and what I witnessed in that game against Fulham was not nice. Do you think they were right to take Hassan Hussle out? Um, I think at the time I could understand the decision. The club hadn't really moved forward in terms of uh, where we were when he took over. Now, you could argue that he wasn't really backed. Mm. However, this season he had, been, career, he had yeah. been backed. Not, not all of that 140. Some of that was in January when he wasn't right. there. So it was about 80, I think, in the summer that we spent, which is still, still a we have not spent spend, that yeah. kind of yeah. Yeah. So um, he was backed for the first time. How much say did he have in those transfers? I don't know. Mm. Um, I liked Ralph personally uh, as a coach. I liked the way that he tried to get his teams to play. I thought sometimes he had deficiencies in terms of he kept trying to go back to a three at the back, which our players were not capable of playing. And every time he did it, we just got smashed. Um, some of his substitutions were bizarre uh, in foot, yeah. in game management. So are you getting to the point bit... where you think it was time? So I think I could understand why the decision yeah. was made. Then once you've made that decision, you then have to an, you yeah. then have to get it right. What did you make of Nathan Jones? Because because it was because a car crash. It was a car crash on it. It, it was. It wasn't crash. at that level, was he? But I don't think it was at that not at that level in terms of his ability to coach. Because no. I think they thought they made some really educated decisions based upon the numbers that came out and the reasons and why they made decisions. Because yeah, yeah. but it was his ability to manage Premier League footballers was the problem on it. Uh, yeah, and I think his ability to uh, come across well in his press conferences mm. as well. I thought it's just a little bit bizarre. And the sometimes. players will be listening to that and finding anything they can use as an excuse for the reasons for their performances not coming up to snuff. Well, you know that. You know yeah. that more than most. Mm. <laughs> Do you think they're in a position, Southampton, to bounce back? 
Uh, it appears from uh, the statements that have been made so far from Sport Republic that you know they're still willing to to be there and back the club. Mm. Um, so we've well, got no bleeding trust. From that point they? of view, <laughs> not really. Uh, from that point of view, I guess it all depends on how many how many of those players kind of we lose the you know the few decent ones that were. He's going to go there, isn't he? Yes. Ward Prowse is going to go, isn't he? I would imagine so. Mm. I would imagine so. And um, and and a few of the and other again, ones. And again, like Some Harry of them Kane. deserve to go and be good for to get rid of them, right? Yeah, yeah. But like Harry Kane, I don't think any Southampton fans would begrudge, begrudge James Ward Prowse yeah. to move right now. I mean, I suppose we've answered this question, but I, I'm going to weave him into the conversation anyway because he's popping up now at Chelsea. I mean, he was exciting at Southampton, Pochettino. He went on to develop a good side at Spurs. I, I think he's a bridesmaid. I, I think anyone can win in France with PSG. And I think I'm yet to be convinced that he's an overall winner, Pochettino. And, that, and to go and manage Chelsea doesn't matter what people suggest about Todd Bowley right now. You're going to have to win sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, but Southampton, since Pochettino, have pretty much regressed though, haven't they? Even with the case that we make no, for Hasan Hootl. Not quite. Do you not think so? Not quite, because we had Ronald Koeman. Right. So Ronald Koeman was more successful at Southampton than Pochettino was, which kind of tends to get forgotten. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so you're Pochettino, right. we finished eighth under Poch, Poch yeah. uh, under Ronald. Funny I think narratives, isn't it? They get created in one's mind. We finished seventh and sixth, I think. We had European football um, under Koeman. Poch got you under eighth. Koeman. Cla Claude Puel Claude got you eighth, got everyone eight. hated. Now, this was, but that was interesting, because we finished... Uh, the season that, that Puel took us to eighth uh, and everybody was going, oh, he shouldn't have, shouldn't have been sacked. He shouldn't have been sacked. He got us to eighth, mm. which which sounds great. But from where we were the season before, where I think we'd also finished eighth the season before, but we'd finished eighth with 17 less points right. under Puel. And so the bar a, was lower. A, the, so the points were a lot lower. The performances and the level of entertainment that you far less like, Oh my god! Do you was... see any? Do you see any parallels between Southampton and Brighton? Because once upon a time, I remember there were yep. two academies in this country that were really revered, and I'm going to take credit for one of them because Palace was a great academy. Yep. Out came Bostock. Out came uh, Victor Moses. Out came Nathaniel Klein, and who you lot bought? Um, yep. Out came um, Wilfred, um, and on and on I can go. And then the Southampton Academy produces. Uh, Theo Walcott, Alex Oxlade Chamberlain, Gareth, uh, Bell. Gareth Bell, and I know, and I know, my mate Rupert Lowe took a lot of pride in the reflective glory of that. But you see, uh, and Southampton were always one of these clubs. It seems that were constantly asked to replenish. Yeah, they produced players. They saw the vision in certain players, got them in the side, played well. Someone else come along and played and nicked them. Yeah, and there's an element of that That's going on at Brighton. Do you see similarities? That Very there's much. an inevitability. Like Southampton couldn't keep on replenishing it's, and yeah. keep on having to buy cheaply, selling high. Sadio Mane goes out the door. Ricky yep. Lambert goes off to Liverpool. Adam Lallana, yep. Gareth Bale, etc., 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 etc. It's Can, re it's really difficult. I mean, you know yourself how hard it is to keep hold of a player who is being coveted by mm. one of the big boys, um, and that is football. You know, the re the harsh reality of football is that. 99% of all football clubs are selling clubs. Yeah. It's just at what level you're at to sell on. Yeah, absolutely. Everything for sell, someone's prepared to pay the price, right? Absolutely. So um, so it is incredibly difficult, and that's why it's so hard to break into you know, the real top echelons of football mm. unless you now have what used to be hundreds of millions is now, you know, you're talking about billions now to, to try and break into uh, that level where you're where you're really challenging with the big boys, so it is. I, I think Bryant, what Bryant have done, have been incredible. Um, I think do you think? It's do you think? I mean, can I, they sustain it? Yeah, is because the, is I the, get I, I get the, the impression question. that they're miles ahead of everybody else. In because I mean, whilst data is only as good as what you do with it, the understanding of what you're buying and the reasons why you're buying it, and the thought process is about not the money ball mentality that that yeah. people think it is. Yeah. But I get the impression that Brighton are really, really in a groove right now. Really the, understand yeah. what they're doing and why they're doing it, and they're probably a couple of years ahead of everyone else. Yeah. But do you think there's a possibility that Brighton could find themselves in a similar situation? Because yeah, every time they produce top players, some bugger's going to come along and meet the buy price, aren't they? Absolutely. Well, and not just it's not just on the field as well. You know, if you start getting a recruitment department yeah. that is doing well, 
they're going to get yeah, nicked by the big boys. Yeah, and, and that's happened to us, you know? And so it's, it's really difficult to keep replenishing and replenishing. And at some point, you know, you will get it wrong on occasion because football, mm. you know, not, nobody it's gets difficult. every decision absolutely. right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely.